Push buttons, micro buttons, and many other buttons are all mechanical buttons. When you press or release such a button this way, it might bounce around before reaching a stable or what we call a steady state position. This bounce might be interpreted by a fast digital circuit as multiple button pushes, and you might have seen this when dealing with buttons in your circuits before. So in this segment, I'll show you how we're gonna clean up the output of these buttons. We're gonna debounce them. By debouncing, meaning I'm gonna clean the noisy output into something a little bit more stable. And I will also show you how to convert uh, button, uh, button levels uh, such as one or zero and detecting edges into pulses. There are many ways to do this. Um, by no means the method I'm gonna show you is the only one, but I'll only focus, uh, because I'm focusing on finite state machines in this module, so I'll just utilize finite state machines to do all the things I, I'm intending to do. So before jumping into the details of how to build a debouncing circuit and how do we deal with um, push buttons, I just wanna explore how a noisy or a bouncy button input looks like. So in this figure here, I'm showing you uh, I'm showing you the original switch or push button output. So as you might see, you might the button is not pressed and then you press it. You, and there are different ways, by the way, like buttons can be at, at idle, could be zero or one. In this particular case, I'm telling you when it's not pressed, it's zero. And then you press it because you want to move it to one. What happens is that mechanical parts inside that push buttons will bounce around up and down, up and down, up and down until it reaches what we call a steady state position here. And this steady state or stable position um, tells me that it should be at one. However, if you have a really quick and fast digital circuit, it would read these here as multiple push buttons and it might read them as one, two, three, and then four. And if you're connecting this to a counter, it will just count four counts instead of just one, even though you pushed it one time. The same happens when you're actually moving from one all the way to zero. So for example, if you're dealing with a button that is actually uh, like sometimes like it is in this button, for example, in here we'll move from zero to one and when you release it, you go from one to zero or maybe the button itself is actually idle at one and then when you press it, it goes to zero. It's the same concept. What I'm saying in here is like if you go from one to zero, it might bounce around and again, um, if you're connecting this to a counter, you might see it as one, two and three or something like that. So when, when we're about to do, we're gonna design a finite state machine that try to clear these bouncing in here. And there's an, at least a couple of ways that we can, we can deal with them. So the first one is what we call delayed detection. And a delayed detection is simply say, okay, I will only consider a button output once it stabilizes. Meaning if it lasts for a short period of time, I'm not gonna consider it stable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, I went to one, but then I went, well, it's not long enough, I went to zero, so I'm not gonna to respond to it at all. Okay, so what happens like you keep, you keep, you keep, you keep waiting and then until you reach a stable position. When you, when you get to a stable position, you're gonna wait for a certain period of time. In this particular example, I'm showing you something that lasts for 20 millisecond, but by no means this, this number is actually stable. You can actually, or, or state static, you can change it up to you. 25 millisecond, 50 milliseconds, up to you. But for the sake of simplicity and for this example, we're just gonna focus on 20 millisecond. What I'm saying in here is as long as this is bouncy in less than 20 millisecond, I'm just gonna ignore it completely. Once it reaches a, state, a stable position or a steady state position and it lasts in that steady state position for 20 millisecond, I will actually change the actual output of that finite state machine or the circuit I'm about to build. And I'm gonna say, this is demounts. The same goes in here. So if it is um, changing between one all the way to zero and it doesn't last for a long time, I'm gonna just ignore all of this to actually stay, uh, uh, stay in a stable position for at least 20 millisecond and that's here. So when you press the button, the actual button press might generate a signal that looks like this, but the output of the circuit or a debouncing circuit that we're about to build should look something like that. We call it delayed response or delayed detection because technically I pressed the button in here, but I really outputted it after it's even more than 20 millisecond. Like if the bounce is like say five millisecond or even 20 millisecond or like 20 millisecond bouncing. So that means the output between here and here lasted for about 40 millisecond. And I'm saying it's 20 millisecond bouncing because none of these states here lasted for a complete 20 millisecond. That's why it can, la it can last for that. The same goes in here. You can see that I actually released a button in here. What happened is it took me some time to actually reach it. And let's say it's a little, at least 20 millisecond, it's stable. And there's like some time that is not stable, maybe five, maybe one, who knows? We don't know that. 
So the other solution is maybe your push button is really critical and you really need something that is a quick response. So what you can do is you can do an early detection. What you do is you say, okay, I detected, I detected a change. I'm going to implement that change right away and I'm going to ignore any bounce for at least 20 milliseconds before I actually read it one more time. So yes, it's bouncing in here, it's bouncing, but what happened in here is I'm ignoring it for at least 20 milliseconds. If the bounce lasts for more than 20 milliseconds, then it will actually read it again as if it's like it's going to just read the first value and just stay for 20 milliseconds. So there's that. So as you can see, the delay in here, so this one is exactly when I pressed it, it didn't wait for the button to be stabilized. Of course, this will create a problem if that button was just noisy and you didn't press it and it was just generating the signal. What I'm saying is like, let's assume that that was just noise and you didn't actually press it. What happens in here in the early detection, it actually detected that noise as a push and it will just generate the signal. But again, if, if your application is very critical and you really need it when you exactly when you press it, it's something like maybe you're, you're studying the reaction time of, of a human by pressing a button and you're doing some sort of these experiments and you really care about these millisecond or, or microsecond actually responses because it's part of your study, you might want to implement this particular debouncer. All right, so I'll focus on implementing the delay detection in here, and uh, you can use the same methodology I'm about to show you to actually implement an early detection. So let's get started. What we're going to do is we're gonna design a finite state machine that actually will implement this debouncing circuitry. So here in this figure, I showed you that I actually am using 20 millisecond, and my design, I am gonna just leave it open to the user so that you can you can change it. Like with code, you can just change it between 20, 10 milliseconds, up to you. And because I'm actually making it a little bit more uh, generic or more um, uh, more generic, let's say that, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have some sort of a timer that allows us to do this. So technically, we need to use some sort of a timer and what I will do is the finite state machine that I'm about to actually design, it will have a one output, okay? So let me just write these here. So I need an output here for the FSM, the finite state machines. A lot of the time when I'm designing finite state machine, I do this. So it's like I, I think on the side, what do I need? I need a timer, okay. And then from the timer, well, what I will do is I will, of course, I have an output from the finite state machine to the timer to reset the timer. So I'm just gonna call it timer reset. Okay, and you'll, you'll see why in a second. Um, and then the next thing is I need an input and that input is actually the timer to the finite state machine. So these are all the finite state machine um, circuits. So an input from the timer to the finite state machine, and let's call it timer tick. It's actually when, whenever the timer actually finishes, it will tick and I know that 20 milliseconds have finished. You'll, you'll see why in a second why I need a timer reset, but in short, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep resetting the timer and when I need it, I'll stop resetting it and I'll let it go. That's how I'm gonna do it. All right, what other inputs and outputs do I need? I believe we need, um, for example, I believe in terms of timer, we need some sort of a noisy input. Okay, so this is the, the that noisy button in here. It's actually, I'm just gonna call it noisy. That's the actual button uh, output. And then what we need is we need something that is, uh, let's say, debounced, uh, debounced output in here. Okay, debounced output. Let's just call it debounced for now. All right, and the debounce should mimic this particular signal right here. So I'm trying to design some sort of a circuit that does the following. All right, so that's, I believe these are the finite state inputs and outputs that I need. I might just need to add some later on. I don't know. For now, let's just go ahead and design it. So the very first step I usually do is I'll say, okay, let me just start with some sort of a, um, some sort of a reset condition, that's what I call it. And I'm just gonna call it S0 for now. And on the side, I'm gonna say, well, S0 is just, uh, maybe maybe you can write it, maybe you don't. Know, like, I'm just gonna say a reset condition, okay? Reset condition meaning idle condition. Uh, let's, say, let's study this particular case where it's actually in idle, it's actually zero, okay? And that's what we do. All right, and of course, um, because because we decided to start with zero, I'm gonna say, okay, as long as the noisy input of the button in here is at zero, I'm gonna just stay in that position. So that uh, uh, amplify the fact that I need it like in, in the reset position to be at zero, all right? Okay, so next what I need to do is I need to say, okay, I press the button, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the button, I'm gonna go to a different state in here. Okay, so this state in here, I'm gonna call it S1, and I'm gonna say, well, I press the button, this is here, noisy now is one. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to say here, this is what I care about in here. So I was at zero and then I press one, and so I'm gonna move to a different position. 
So I need to stay in this position for 20 millisecond. So what I'm saying in here is I am trying to stay to make sure that I stayed in that position for 20 millisecond. If I don't stay for 20 millisecond, I'm going to go back. So what I'm going to say is if for some reason that noisy didn't stay for one, but actually it went back to zero. OK, so I'm going to say noisy and I'm going to say noisy um, uh, or noisy. Yes. So noisy prime, meaning noisy prime, meaning it went back to zero. So I'm saying in here, if you go back to zero, go back to the reset position. I'm just going to ignore it. All right. Other than that, if you stayed at no noisy, I'm going to do this here. So I'm going to stay in that position. I just need to stay in that position and make sure I don't move out from this position. If the button was pressed till I actually um, remove the 20, 20 millisecond or whatever the timer is ticking. At. So what I need to do is I need to incorporate the timer somehow in here. And as it turns out, here's how we can do it. So we can do I'm just going to read the, um, put the timer in a different color in here. We can say, OK, so I need the timer. Technically, I need like after I press it, I'm going to noisy. So after I press it in here, I'm going from zero to one. I need it to last for 20 milliseconds. So I need the timer to really start here at 20 milliseconds. So this is whenever I actually go to the timer in here, I want it to start. So as you may recall, the timer has an enable or reset. Like if I put the enable, but the timer wasn't reset, I'm not going to get the correct time. So as it turns out, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use um, more outputs in here because it's just simpler and just uh, makes sense. I'm going to say the timer reset here. OK, um, in this particular state, I'm going to keep resetting. I'm going to keep resetting. I'm going to re keep resetting the timer. Once I move to this state in here, I'm just not going to reset the timer. So I'm going to let it go. So as long as I'm in this state, the timer never finishes because it keeps resetting. I keep pressing that button on it. But once I move in here, I'm just going to not reset it. Of course, you can go ahead and just say timer um, reset um, uh, something like this prime. But usually in a finite state machine, it's like if you don't want something or a signal or an output is not asserted, you just you just don't include it. So you can say is like, OK, I'm not going to include it in here. And it's implied that that particular output is not asserted. OK, so it was in noisy at the very beginning and then um, you press the button in here. So you let the timer go. And once the timer actually ticks, this is the time that you actually need to move to somewhere else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate that other input in here, the timer of this, uh, this input in here, the timer tick. So what I will say is timer tick or timer done, depending on what you want to call it. I'm just going to call it timer done. Just it's probably uh, clearer. So as long as the timer done is not done like for example you kept pressing it but the timer is not done so i'm going to stay in that position 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 okay so but if you kept it pressed and the noise is pressed and it lasted for 20 milliseconds and the timer actually is done what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to a different state in here and that state in here i'm going to call it state one uh, state two since i have state one already i'm going to call this state two and in here i'm going to say well i'm going to move in here whenever it's actually noisy is actually at one and the timer done is actually ticked or it ticked. So let's just review what I just done in here. So S zero is at zero. Then you press the button, you press the button in here. As long as, as your, that button is pressed, that button is pressed, that button is pressed and the timer is not done. I'm going to stay in that. If you keep the button pressed and the timer is done, I'm going to move to a different state in here. And in this particular state, I will assert that debounced output in here that one here. I'm just going to call I'm just going to put it in green. Debounced. And that here is that particular output in here. There you go. So this particular state is the state that is actually keeping it up here at one. And again, if you if I'm since this is a more output, if I don't include it in one of the states, that means it's at zero. So it is currently at zero in here and currently at zero in here. That green part is actually zero there. And that's here is S2. So let's see what else do we need. So well, um, if you keep noisy pressed, I don't believe we need to move. So I'm just going to say noisy uh, here, which is the button is pressed. If you keep it pressed, I'm going to just stay in state two. That means you're staying in that particular line in here, the higher one in here. Now, what I want to do is I want to deal with this particular situation in here. And in this particular situation is just the opposite of the first one. I'm going to say, OK, if noisy is not pressed, you're going to go down and then um, we're going to make sure that the timer starts. So what happens in here is that timer reset also should be here. So this is timer uh, reset should be also asserted in here, because as long as I'm in this state, I don't care about the timer. I'm just going to reset it. So now I can go to a different state whenever I don't press it or I depress it or release noisy. So I'm going to just say noisy 
um, prime. I'm just going to go to a different state in here. I'm going to call it state three. Okay, and this state three in here, let's see what type of outputs um, will be asserted. So this particular state three in here is very similar to S1, but now I'm just doing the zero. So what happens, um, what happens is I'm gonna keep the debounce asserted, and let me show you why. Because I wanna make sure I'm gonna keep the output in here asserted as long as it's bouncing. And I'm gonna keep it asserted for a certain period of time till it actually stabilized. So it's still a tie in here. So in this particular state in here, I'm going to say, okay, I depressed it. What happened with the time of reset is I'm not resetting it anymore. So it's going to go, go ahead. And what's going to happen is if you press noisy or like because it was bouncing, I'm going to go back in here. Let me just do that the appropriate color. So we're going to do this here and we're going to say noisy. Okay. So noisy basically gets you back to state two. Like let's assume that it didn't last for 20 milliseconds, but if it did last for 20 milliseconds or whatever the timer is set to, so you're going to say, okay, here. So if you kept that button released and the timer is not done, okay, the timer done is actually prime. You're going to stay in this situation. And then you go to this particular position in here when noisy is not pressed and the timer has been, like has finished. So this is the timer done in here. Okay, so let's uh, double check and make sure that every state actually has all the inputs and outputs. Remember we have uh, we have a couple of inputs, okay, one and two. So each one of them should at least have four. So let's say here one, I have one in noisy and I have one in here in noisy here. And the, the reason why I don't, um, I'm only having two because they are, the timer reset, I don't care about it for these arrows in here. So this is here, I can just replicate it and say noisy prime with timer reset and non-timer reset, so that's fine. In here, I have noisy um, asserted, here's one, here's two, the same, and I have a three in here. And what happens in here is with this noisy prime, it doesn't matter what the timer, um, timer done signal is, I'm just gonna go back in here. So in here is the same and you can follow it. What I wanna emphasize is the following. So in this particular situation in here, what I have is the um, the output of, or the, the output debounce is at zero. So this actually represents these states in here, which is that one in here and this one in here. That's what it represents. And in this here, which I'm gonna highlight in green, okay, it highlights when the debounce is actually at one. So technically it actually just gives me this particular situation in here. And you can follow it. All right, so of course I didn't write all the states in here, but I can just write them for you. So for example, state one is actually um, hold uh, zero till timer, till 20 millisecond. I'm just gonna write it for short 20 millisecond. It doesn't have to be 20 millisecond. And then S2, S2 um, is actually one. Uh, and then S3 hold at one for till 20 millisecond actually is uh, done. All right, so here's the implementation for this finite state machine. It's pretty straightforward, so I'm not gonna type it in the video. I just typed it ahead of time. I'm just gonna walk you through um, the code. So in here, what you see is I have between state zero to state three, I have four different register or four different states. And for four different states, I need two bits. And that's what you see in here. So that's the state register in here. And for parameters um, for the S0, I'm just renaming them. So in my code, it's just easier to follow. So I'm gonna say state zero, state one, state two, state three. I'm just giving them some numbers. And this is the sequential part. It's just basically a re, um, just the state register with the reset and the next state. And of course, the next state logic in here is just following this particular diagram that you can see. I'm just gonna walk you, for example, through the one through S1 and you can follow the rest on your own. Um, for example, in the S1 in here, it's telling me if you are in S1 and you got noisy prime, which is the one in here, okay, you go back that way. Okay, and meaning you go back to S0 and that's what this is telling me. And in here, it's telling me if you noisy is still pressed and the timer is not done, which is this particular state, that means you stay in S1. That's what happens in here. And in here, I'm getting, I'm saying if noisy end timer is done, so then in your next state is actually S2. And that's exactly what we did. And the rest of it is pretty straightforward. Now, in terms of the outputs, um, at this particular finite state machine, let me show you, I have a clock and a reset, but really the inputs are noisy and the timer done, and the outputs are the timer reset and the debounce. So I need to figure out the timer reset and the debounce. And it's really straightforward looking at this diagram. I color timer reset as red. So it should be asserted whenever you're in S0, whenever you're in S2. And by convention, if I don't write it in S1 and S3, that means it's not included. 
So really, and in the time I reset, all I have to do is just like, is the state register S0 or the state register is S2, just assert that signal. The same goes with the debounce. I'm looking at, uh, for it to be in S3 or S2. So you can see it in S2 and S3 in here. However, this code is just this particular finite state machine, and it's designed in such a way that you need to actually use it with the timer so that you can set the timer in the way you want it with the, with the value you want. So in here you can see what I did is I actually created a debouncer delay, which is not only the finite state machine. And in this particular code, it's really simple. All I did is, is just the finite state machine itself. I just instantiated an instance of that FSM that was just created, and I just put a timer right next to it. I am, I'm using the timer parameter and I'm passing that value as a parameter and I said like, okay, 20 millisecond, I calculated the value to be a little bit less than 2 million or something like that. Uh, one, well, 2 million minus 1 and I put it that way. You can easily use this timer as a, an input and you can just expose that in a delayed in here if you want to. For some reason or another, you want to change it on the fly. I don't see a reason to do that. Um, and you can, of course, you can just do this final value here and expose it to the outside if you want to. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to embed it in here and just say it's 20 millisecond. It's flexible enough. You can change it the way you want it. And just as a reminder, the timer parameter is just a timer um, that ticks whenever the final value is actually reached. So it goes from zero, for example, in this case, it's to 255. As long as it's enabled, it's going to tick and give me just a short period, like where a short tick. And that tick is actually the one that you see in here, which is done in here and the done in here. It's actually it, it's actually triggering this move between S1 and S2 and between S3 and S0. But as long as you're in S3 or S2, because the timer reset is asserted, it just keeps resetting the timer and the timer is never on in these situations or in these states. So I went ahead and wrote some test bench to test this noisy and uh, find it, and the whole debouncer circuit. It's a, it's a delayed debouncer, so I expect to see some sort of a delay about 20 milliseconds or so. So let me show you here, I have a clock, I have a reset signal, and the reset is, uh, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm resetting the, um, the signal at the very, very beginning in here. So you can zoom in, I can zoom in, I can zoom in one more time and again and again in here. It's really um, long in here. So you can see I reset it just for a short period of time at the very beginning, about two nanosecond, and then that's it. The reset, the, the end is basically just one, not asserted. It's at one. And then in here, I'm just generating some noisy input signal in here. So the first one is actually not noisy. I just wanted to see it, like what's the output of the debounce. And as you can see, uh, we can just do this here. For example, let's just count like or calculate the delay between when it was asserted and when this signal here got asserted. So if you actually click on this guy in here, you can see it's actually different is 20 millisecond as I expected. So I'm going to do this here and as I do this here. And again, you can just calculate the difference between this point and this point. And you can see if you actually clicked on that, it's actually 20 millisecond. All right, so what I what did I just show you? I showed you basically an input that is not bouncy. However, even though it's not bouncy, it's still like it needs to stabilize for 20 millisecond before it gets asserted. And then, then it needs to um, stabilize at zero for 20 millisecond before it's actually, I move it to zero. All right, so what happens next? I generated some noisy, like the, the, like the figure we, we saw. So some noisy move from zero to one and some noisy move from one to zero. And as you might um, expect, so these noises got completely ignored. And if you calculate the distance between this point in here, I'm just going to add this signal and this point in here, and I'm going to click on the blue in here. It tells me that it's 20 millisecond. That's exactly how I actually set up my um, timer to be. And you can, you can, of course, explore this here between this point and this point, it should be 20 millisecond. And then I generated a few, um, a few noisy signals here. It's like I didn't press the button. It just basically was noisy. And I'm just showing you that it ignored it. If you had not the delayed, but the early response in here, you would have seen some sort of an output in here. Okay. But what I'm saying is like the delayed response will ignore these noisy signals. If your push button is noisy, the same goes in here. So there's no noise at the beginning and you can see after 20 milliseconds, I sorted it, but there was some noise inside in the middle. It just will completely ignore it because it never stabilizes to one. And that's what you see. Um, just uh, as, as a reminder, you can actually, um, if you're debugging your signal and you want to see all the different states, um, you can just say the scope and then go to objects and you can say, well, this is actually coming from the, my test bench. Um, here's my test bench and you can see um, the unit, the delayed debounce delayed in here. The unit under test is in here and it's telling me inside the unit under test, there's a finite state machine. I can click on it because inside it in here, 
you can see, where is it? It's here. So you can see that I'm instantiating an FSM zero and I'm instantiated to time and parameter. Whereas for some reason you want to see something or some internal signal, you do not have to expose it all the way through. You can just do that. You can, for example, I want to see the state register itself. I can just do that in here and just put it in here. I drag it. It'll um, take some time to actually add that waveform. Not a lot, but some. All right, so it added it, but it shouldn't. It doesn't give me the output itself. So what I need to do is I need to refresh it in here. And if you relaunch the simulation, you're going to see that signal um, asserted again. Uh, this particular simulation actually takes a little bit of time because it's it's long, and I'm generating signals exactly in the in the same exact time I expect to see if I implemented it on hardware. So you can see that it'll take some time to generate, and you can see this one here is the current time. Just as a, as a reminder as well, like you have to go to setting and then you have to go to simulation in here and you have to go to the simulation and you make sure that the simulation runtime is not that short. I forgot the default number. I have to change it so that it actually is able to run in here. Other than that, it will stop early. As you can see, the simulation is still running. But anyway, I it's like I want like I can see what I wanted to show you. So these are the state register, and as you can see, these are S0, S1, S2, S3, and you can follow them. So let me just show you in here. So for example, we were at S0, and we know um, uh, it's between S2 and S3 is actually asserted. So let me let me show you. So according to this diagram, what I have is um, between S0 and S1, it should be actually at 0, and S3 and S2, it should be on 1. And you can see that, um, where is it? Here, let me just do that one more time. So S2 and S3, it's actually asserted, and S0 and S1, it's actually deasserted. It's exactly following this particular diagram, and I can see it here. So for some reason or another, if you wanted to debug your code, you can add any signal you want. Again, you go to Sources, um, actually, you go to scope and then you go to object and, and then from this object in here, you can select whatever you want in here, whatever signal you want. You click on that and then you drag it and then you relaunch the simulation. So we've seen how to debounce a signal. Now we'll move on to the next um, issue when dealing with uh, push buttons. So the issue is the following. Uh, whatever we did right now, it kind of replicates whatever the input is. So if you stay at zero, it's going to stay at zero. And if you stay at one, it will stay as one as long as you keep that button pressed. But it's, sometimes it's necessary to convert the output of the button, debounce or not, into some event pulses. What I mean, is, for example, you want, let's say that you want your circuit or you connected that push button um, to something, um, to something like a counter, for example. If you keep it pressed, that counter will keep counting zero, one, two, three, four, five. It's, what if you just wanted, like, with every press of a button, you want it just to count once? So what we need is we need to create some sort of a circuit that detects edges. So we can f use finite state machines to convert this button in here, the debounce one or the non-debounce one. It will work the same exact way, but probably the cleaner way is to debounce the signal and then just use that finite state machine. And what it will do is it will convert the output into pulses based on different events. So in this part, what I will do is I'll show you um, the design of an FSM that detects a positive edge, which is basically going from zero to one. It will generate a pulse exactly under that in here, and also the negative edge, which is going from one to zero in here, and it will generate another pulse in here. And I will, as a bonus, just make that particular finite state machine or that particular circuit also generate a pulse, whether it's a positive edge or a negative edge, it doesn't matter. And what we're, we're about to do in here, there's multiple ways to design this edge detector, but really what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a zero to one or one to zero edge detector. And that's pretty much it. I can do this using melee outputs or more outputs. So what I'm, what I'm after is, uh, at this point, what I'm after is a single input. And let's call, let's write these in here. So let's say input um, and that single input is level. It's actually the debounced. Um, I'm just, it doesn't have to be the debounced, but I'm just going to use the debounced um, input. That's the level. And what I will do is I'll generate a few outputs in here. Let me just write these in here. So I'm going to generate a few outputs. So I'm going to do a, a positive edge. I'm just going to call it positive edge. It's just a pulse whenever it detects a positive edge. A negative edge, um, it's just a pulse. It detect, like it will generate a pulse whenever it detects a negative edge. And I'm gonna, just going to say um, underscore edge in here. I will use underscore edge because edge is a, is a keyword in Verilog. So I'm not going to just use it. Anyway, so let's go ahead and design it. So I, I have the options to make these um, outputs as melee or more. And because I'm using it with a debounce circuit for, um, and I have shown you how to design something that is, these are more outputs in here. So I'm just going to design it using melee. And frankly speaking, it's simpler to implement as well. 
So okay, let's let's do that. I'm gonna start with um, the first state. The first state is actually I'm just gonna call it um, here. I'm just gonna call it S0. That's the reset state. So this reset state is going to do the following. So I'm gonna assume that it's a zero state whenever you are in zero. So let me just do zero state. I'm just gonna say zero state. All right, if the button is not pressed, there is no edges. And if it's not pressed, I'm just gonna say, well, you stay in here. So as long as the level is actually, I can do level, level prime in here, I'm gonna stay in that situation. Once I press the button, okay, you bounce or bounce, I don't care. I'm, I'm detecting an edge and a signal now. I need to move to a different state. And that state in here, I'm gonna call it S1. And that S1 is actually will tell me that it's one. But more importantly, what happened is now, this one moved me to this state. So whenever the level is one, I move to a new state. But what I need to do is I need to say, well, I just figured out there's a positive edge in here. Since I moved from zero to one, that's a positive edge in here. So I'm gonna just assert it. And since it is a melee output, I need to write it on the transition line. Again, this melee output is associated with this whenever the input is one. All right. So that's the S1. And of course, because S1 tells me, well, if you keep that button pressed, everything will be the same in here. I'm gonna just say level, okay? And again, I'm gonna adopt this situation when I, if I don't write an output somewhere, that means it's just not asserted. So there's no edges in here and there are no edges in here because I didn't assert any of the edges in here. Now I release that button. I was at one, I need to go back to zero and that's pretty much it. So I can say, well, zero or um, I said one, but let me just rewrite it in here. I think a better way to do it is because I'm using level, level, okay. Since I only have one input, that's fine to write zero, one, but I think it's better and much simpler to read that way. So level prime is that way. And of course I have an input now because what I did is I moved from one to zero, so I have a negative edge and that's how it is. Now you might be wondering like, how about edge in here? Well, whenever P edge is asserted or negative edge is asserted, um, I'm gonna get a pulse. So all I have to do is just or these two signals and I'm just gonna do it with code. If you really care about that, you find that steam machine, have that particular output, you can just say, well, okay. You can just say not only this, but also this one here is edge is asserted and, and the other output in here, which is edge is asserted. You can do it that way as well. So either way is fine. I'm just gonna use it with by ordering these two signals in here in my code. So this is why I'm not writing. All right, so that's how we do it with melee outputs. And frankly speaking, you can go through the implementation. I have not, but I can think about it. It's really um, two states. That means I only need one flip-flop. And really, if it's one flip-flop, um, I believe that flip-flop is just connecting the output to its input. I think it's something like that uh, with uh, some sort of a level or something like that. I don't know. Uh, let's see, uh, I, maybe not actually. So what we do is we do this one here, probably it's level, and then you have the output, and what you do is you take the inputs in here, you basically put this one here and this one here, and you, maybe you do this here with, the, with an and, and you can figure out. So if this is one and this is zero, and this is just detecting it, it's probably will detect like one and the previous one was a zero. So you detected a negative edge and that will be the N edge if you want to. Anyway, the implementation itself is not important. What I'm trying to say, it's a pretty simple um, way to do it even without a finite, without actually writing the finite state machine. But the proper way to do it is just to do the state diagram in here and implement it. So let's go to Vivado and just figure out how to implement this in here. So I went to Vivara and I wrote that code again. Um, again, I'm writing these codes because they are kind of long to just write. Um, I can walk you through the code. So the code again is clock on reset as any synchronous digital system is. Um, it's input, I called it level in here, so I kept it level. And then I generated a few edges. So I have positive edge, negative edge, and just an edge. And again, if you remove that underscore, you're gonna see that it actually highlights it as a keyword and it gives you some sort of an error. So that's why we use an underscore. And it's okay to start a variable name with an underscore. Um, again, what I have is I have one and zero, so or zero one. So I only have two states. I only need one flip flop. So the state register is just a flip flop. I don't need more. So that's why I say reg, and there's no vector here. And I have the parameters s zero and s one. And as usual, sequential state here with the reset and the next state. And the next state just follows this diagram that we just created. Really what you have to do with designing finite state machine is spend most of your time doing this in here. If you have that designed correctly, 
writing it in Verilog is really straightforward. All you have to do is just the case statement for the state register and then list all the states and then tell me in each state what should be the next state based on the inputs. That's what I'm doing in here. So for example, let's take a look at the S1. S1 in here tells me the following. If it's level, according to this here, I need to stay in S1 and that's exactly what I'm doing. And if it else, other than that, basically it's level level prime or you can say if, if level or if not level, it's the same thing. Okay, so then the next state will be S, S0. Now let's take a look at the outputs. So the outputs in here, well, it's telling me, again, these are merely outputs, so pay attention to that. So yes, the output is on the transition line, but it's associated with the source state. So the positive engine here, you can see that the state has to be in S0, okay, and the input had to be level, or a certain level, and that's what happens in here. The negative edge tells me the source should be S1, that's why the state register should be S1, and the level have to be primed, and that's why not level in here. And again, the edge, you can you can just do that in here and just basically create it that it has to be S0 and level or S1 and 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 level not or something like that. You can you can definitely do this. Or what I did is I just basically ord them because they, I just need a pulse whenever a positive edge or the negative edge is there. So this edge detector is generic, so you can use it as an event detector in any, like anytime you need a button, you can just use it. So you can, and, and it will generate a positive edge, a negative edge, and an edge in general. So if you care about when you press the button, you use, like when you press the button and the button is by default at zero, and you press it, it becomes a one. Okay, so that's a positive edge. So you can, you can just, just use that. Um, similarly, if your button or you care about when you release the button, when, not when you press it, you can take a look at the negative edge. And when you just care about the button being pressed and depressed, that's how um, the edge is. It's actually every single time you press it and depress it, you're going to get the two events. So to show you the output of these um, finite state machine or this edge detector, what I did is I created a module. I called it button. And really, you can you can use that button, and you can you can include whatever you want in that button. But for now, what I did is I I uh, put a delayed debouncer a debouncer delayed in it. Okay, so technically, I'm just debouncing it with the with the finite state machine, the one that is the timer is inserted inside it. All I'm doing is I'm giving it a noisy signal, and it's giving me a debounce output. And then I'm taking that output and I'm putting it as an input to an edge detector. And then I'm showing, I'm seeing a positive edge and negative edge and an edge just to show you all of it. So the whole button in here is actually two parts. It's actually a debouncer and then an edge detector. Okay. So let's take a look at the output of the test bench. So the test bench is very similar to the one that I showed you the debouncer. It's actually the same exact stimulus signals, but when, what I'm doing is I'm showing you the positive edge, the negative edge and the edge. If these actually confuse you, you can definitely remove them. Let me just do this here so it's cleaner. What you can see is these are the positive edge. So whenever you go from zero to one, you're gonna see it. So technically, if I actually zoom in here, if I zoom in here, I should see that little tiny, um, little tiny signal. And this signal here actually is asserted whenever the debounce went from zero to one. Okay, that's a positive edge. And again, you're gonna see the edge as well is activated at the same exact time because, the because it's an edge in here. I don't care whatever it is, whether it's positive or negative. And in here you might see or might think, well, this looks like as if it's going for a whole clock cycle, okay? So just one, one comment um, about it. We have designed that finite state machine, the one here, as a melee detector. So it's a melee detector, that means it depends on the input. So you can see, but the input in here is debounced in this particular case. What I did is I took noisy, I debounced it, and then I took it and I basically put the debounce as the input for the edge detector. Because debounce is, is the output of a sequential circuit, um, that output is, is synchronized with the clock. This is why you see this lasting for a whole clock cycle. However, if you use that particular edge detector with something that is not debounced, with an output that is not an output of a sequential circuit, that, that positive edge might not last for the whole clock cycle. Just keep that in mind. If that is important to you, that's, uh, that's okay. Uh, you, can, you can, well, if that's important to you, what you need to do is you need to go and design a more machine and that way you guarantee that you're gonna get a, cl a whole clock cycle worth of like a pulse not like part of it, okay? So that's just a quick comment. Anyway, we go back to in here to the rest of the signals. You can see it in here, hopefully you can see it. So this is the negative edge in here. I can zoom in, I can zoom in, and you can see that in here. What I'm doing is I'm generating not at the positive edge, but at the negative edge, okay? So you can see, there you go. So you have that in here, the positive edge is zero, but the negative edge is one because I'm going from, zero, from one to zero, and of course the edge is asserted as well. So you can take a look at all of it here. So there's a positive edge in here. 
and uh, I can just move that way in here. There's a positive edge in here and there's a positive edge in here as I expected. And of course there's a negative edge in here and there's a negative edge in here and there's a negative edge in here and there's an edge and another edge. You press, release, press, release, press, release. You can use these three signals as you fit, see fit in your design. Lastly, what I want to do with these um, button and debouncer circuit, what I want to do is I want to test the whole edge detector, debouncer and bouncer. So I created this um, button test circuit so to test the different buttons and how different they are. Frankly speaking, I want to just test how the debouncer is, whether it's good or not. So what I did is I, I said, okay, I'm going to use a button and then I'm going, to do to, I'm going to use that button in a couple of circuits actually. So the first one, I'm just going to take it without debouncing it to an edge detector. Okay, and this edge detector will go in here to a counter and I'm just going to count how many times it will actually count. Like I'm going to press and uh, because it's not debounce, I'm assuming that that counter will increase a little bit faster or it will increase with every push of a button. I might see one, two or three or even more if I have, because it's not debounced. And on the other side in here, I'm taking the same exact thing. I'm just going to pass it through a debouncer. And then that debouncer, I'm going to go through an edge detector and another counter. And then I'm going to take the, that counter and this counter and display them on the seventh segment. And I'm going to show you that on the board. I'm going to connect these to one of the push buttons. I believe the down push buttons. So let me show you that. So here's um, the description for the whole circuit. This is the button test circuit, the one that you see in here. So you can see I've, I've instantiated a debounced button. This actually debounced button contains the debouncer and the edge detector together. It's actually of type button. Um, you can see it in here, the code, um, here's button. And button has a debouncer and an edge detector. Again, usually I create some sort of a button and inside it, uh, whether I need the edge detector or not, whether I want the debouncer, whether it's the delayed debouncer or early debouncer or maybe some sort of other things. Usually I just put everything in button and I just use it in my circuit like what I've done in here. So in here I have a button, I give it the noisy and then uh, if I care about the debounce, I output it. If I don't care about it, I just care about the, um, an edge. I just can take whichever edge I want and I'm just going to connect it. So I took that debounce stick in here. This is actually this particular signal. And what I did is I used a UDL, the up down load counter, and I just used it in there. And it's just for, I don't care about like making it bigger. I'm just going to display it on one of these seven segments. And uh, you can see that the, um, that's the counter in here. I think I'm going to take the output in here of the counter and just use it on my seven segment driver. As you can see in here, I'm using it. And I'm going to display it on the fourth seven segment in here. This is the QD bounced. The same goes in here. You can see that then uh, the button without the debouncer, what I did is I said, okay, here's the edge detector followed by counter. So that I just instantiated the edge detector. I put the noisy, t I put, I believe the button in, not the noisy one. This is, this is the one, well, it is the noisy one. It's actually going to the debouncer. It's going to the input noisy in here. I'm just directly connecting it to level. And as you can see, it's in here. It's actually connected to level. And then the output in here, which is a noisy tick. Okay, I called it noisy tick. It's enabling another counter. Okay, and this counter in here actually is outputting Q noisy, and I'm just displaying it using my seven segment driver um, on the zero. So I'm expecting to see the one on zero to a little bit be or count a little bit more than the one on four. So let's see that on the board. Okay, so I uploaded that code to the board. You can see I zero is the one I believe without debouncing, and this one is with the one with the debouncing. And I connected it to the push buttons, down push button. So I'm going to press one, and you can see both of them counted one, so there's no debounce in here. I'm going to try to move my finger and just press it. It's still doing that. I'm going to try it one more time and it's doing that. So I'm going to do it just quick and then I'm going to do it another one in here. It's um, for some reason it's not debouncing. I'm just going to or it's bouncing. So I'm going to reset it. I'm going to do it one more time and uh, oh, there you go. So it caught, it caught one. So this is 10. This is nine. So it counted two in here or counted one. So it caught one of these debouncing in here. So I'm going to do it one more time just to show you. We're going to do that in here. Apparently that button I have is good. So again, this is eight, this is seven because it bounced a little bit. So it counted a couple and you will see that it's really, it's um, usually um, it's that debouncer is not bad. But, um, sometimes I get more than one when I was testing it on a different day and a different temperature. I think, I don't know. Um, now it's just only the, the difference is one, but sometimes like I do it really, really quick like this, for example, and I get like a lot more. So you can see B is, uh, 11 and this is 8 so there's actually a big difference in here and it caught the difference